Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, section 2.4, more about slope. Parallel lines, part two. In the previous video, we discovered that parallel lines have equal slopes, and we used that information to help write the equation of a new line when we were told a point that it went through and another line that it was parallel to. This example is pretty much cut from the same cloth with one big difference. Can you spot it? The big difference is the equation of the parallel line that we were given is in general form and not in slope-intercept form. Now, why is that worth pointing out? We know that parallel lines have equal slopes, and therefore we need to know the slope of the given line. But when it's in slope-intercept form, the slope is parked in front of the x. In general form, that's not the case. The slope of this line is not 9, because this equation is not in slope-intercept form. So that being observed, I think we know how we have to adjust our approach. We still need to use the, the parallel slope, so the slope of that line, but we'll need to find the slope of that line by first converting to slope-intercept form. So first, let's convert to slope-intercept form. Now we can do it in two moves. Remember, to get slope-intercept form, we just need to isolate the y. And along the same lines of thinking as in a previous video, I think I'm going to leave the y on the left side, since its coefficient is positive. That way, when I divide later, I'm dividing by a positive number. If I move the y term, it would become negative, and at some point I have to divide by a negative number, giving me more stuff to keep up with. So we'll leave the y on the left, so it stays 28y, and we'll move the other two terms to the right, so they'll both change sides. The 9x will, will become negative 9x, and the plus 45 will become minus 45. And then we'll divide everything by 28. Now, I could write all this over 28, but I know I'm going to split it into two fractions next, so I might as well do that first. Negative 9 28 x uh, minus 45 28 now, I know the 9 28s won't reduce because 9 can only be reduced by 3 or 9. 45 28s, you might investigate whether it reduces. I'll tell you right now it won't. But whether it reduces is actually irrelevant. Because why did I convert this to slope intercept form? Because I need to look at the slope and use the parallel slope. So now that we know the slope intercept form, then we can say that the parallel slope, so m subscript with the parallel line, is the same as the slope of that line, which is negative 28. So now I have the two ingredients I need to build the line I want. I now know its slope, and I now know a point it goes through, 1 comma 17. So, the point slope form is y minus the given y coordinate, so y minus 17, equals negative 9 28 times x minus the given x coordinate, so x minus 1. Now you might be thinking that the negative 928 is an inconvenient fraction to have there, and you wouldn't necessarily be wrong, but that's a matter of opinion. So now what? Are we done? Nope. Because we want the answer in general form. Now just a reminder that general form is ax plus by plus c equals zero, but the purpose of general form is to look pretty. In some authors' opinions, it's okay if the a, b, and c are fractions, and it's okay if the a is negative. But if I'm going to make this equation look pretty, I don't want fractions and I don't want negatives. Like this form, which was already in general form. No fractions, first number is not negative. You can't always get rid of all the negatives if everything is on one side, but you can at least start with the positive. All right, so what do we got to do to convert point slope form to general form. We'll fix everything that's wrong. Looking for my bottle of water. What's wrong with point slope form? Why is this not in general form? Well, number one, no parentheses. Or we have parentheses and we don't want them. Number two, it's not equal to zero. Number three, it's got a fraction in it. And once everything is on one side, the first number might be negative. We'll fix that part last. So let's fix the, let's fix the Let's fix the fact that we have parentheses that we don't want. So let's go ahead and distribute. y minus 17 
equals negative 9 28 x. Luckily, the thing we're multiplying by is 1, so it's pretty easy. But don't forget that negative times negative is positive. Okay, so that fixes the parentheses we didn't need. What else is wrong? It's still not equal to 0, and there are still fractions. Now, your inclination might be, let me move everything over to the, to the left side and get this equal to 0. My inclination is to get rid of the fractions now. I could wait till later, but think about what would happen if I move this over. If I move this over, I will have two like terms to combine, the negative 17 and the 928, which would become negative if we moved it over. And then I would have to combine the fractions. If you're going to get rid of fractions, you should do them at your earliest possible convenience, which technically was up here. I could have gotten rid of the fractions now by multiplying both sides by 28, but since the multiplication wasn't so bad, I wasn't too worried about it. But I think now's a good time to get rid of the fractions. And remember, you can get rid of fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. Actually, it can be any common denominator. It doesn't have to be the least. In this case, the only denominator is 28. So let's multiply everything by some 28s. On the left side, we get 28 times y, which is 28y, minus 28 times 17. It ends in a 6, give me a second here, 5 and 14 and 8. 5 and 14 is 19, plus 8 is 27. So 2 and 2 is 4. That should be 476, but I'm, I'm second guessing myself. There is a technique for multiplying numbers in your head, and with two digit numbers it's pretty easy, but it is 476. If you're curious, shoot me a message. Equals, the right side is easier, the 28 distributes and cancels each denominator. So we have negative 9x plus 9. Much better, but now we got to get it equal to 0. Moving the 9x over is going to make it positive. 9x, 28y is still sitting there, plus 28y. And the only other thing I have to do is get rid of this 9, and since there's a like term to combine it with, I'll actually do the move of subtracting 9 from both sides. Negative 476 minus 9, when you combine two negatives, you get a bigger negative. Uh, so we get negative 485. And I believe we've got it. That is our line in general form. And if you notice, it looks almost like the original line. The only difference is this number here. If you think about the fact that they have the same slopes, that was kind of destined to happen. So it's the same game as before, except when things are in general form, there are two additional moves. Number one, extracting the slope after converting to slope-intercept form. And number two, at the end, the cleanup is a little bit, bit different because the objective is different. If the objective is slope-intercept form, then you want to get y by itself. But if the objective is general form, you want everything on one side, no fractions, and the leading coefficient positive.